Okay, so for the pepper, you're going to want to use a red and green Parfait Chunky Yarn by Premier Yarns. For the sake of the video, you cannot see the red very well on camera. So for the body, which would be the red part, I'm going to be using this lime greenish color by Your Inspirations Burnett Blanket. So we're going to start off the pattern by doing a slip knot. So you're going to grab your yarn like this. I'm going to twist it and with your pointer and thumb inside now you're going to grab the yarn that's still connected to the ball not the short one the longer one grab it pull it through and pull tight now this is going to create a knot so now once you put your hook inside you're just going to pull tight and now we have our hole so when it comes to crocheting you have two strings here a shorter one that ends and a longer one that's connected to the ball you want to use the one you want to use this one, the longer one that's connected to the ball. For the shorter one, just leave it off the side for now, and we're going to worry about it later. So we're going to chain two, so yarn over, turn your hook 180 degrees, pull through loop on your hook. Yarn over, turn your hook 180 degrees, and pull through the yarn on your hook, giving us two chains, one and two. Now we're going to single crochet four in that first chain. So to single crochet four, I'm going to enter my hook into the stitch. I'm going to yarn under, pull my hook out. Now you're going to have two loops on your hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of them at the same time. And that's one single crochet. So let's do it again. Inserting our hook in the same chain, yarn under, pull that yarn out of the loop, have two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through those two. And that's the next single crochet. So let's do two more of those. In, under, out, yarn over through two, in, under, out, yarn over through two. And that's the first row with four single crochets. I'm gonna mark it with a stitch marker, and I suggest you mark it with two if you get confused. For row two, you're going to single crochet once in each stitch, so four stitches. So that's going to be one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet, remove your stitch marker, in that last stitch, which is four single crochet. Now, if you have an extra stitch and you're like, wait, I have five, you probably crocheted in that chain space or you just crocheted five. So I would suggest taking it apart and just redoing it. There's nothing wrong with starting over, especially that we're at the beginning. And there you go, that's the end of row two. It's now time for row three. And now we're gonna get a little bit more advanced and we're gonna do increases. So an increase is where you do twice of something in the same stitch. So we're going to do one single crochet increase in each stitch. So in this first stitch right here, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn under, pull out, yarn through two, and that's one single crochet. But as you can see here, I'm going to go back into the same loop, back into the same stitch, yarn over, yarn under, pull out, and go through the two. So now as you can see, I have one and two stitches in the same stitch. So let's do it again in the next one. So I single crochet in this stitch. You see how I have one stitch in there already? This stitch belongs into here. I'm gonna enter my hook back in the same stitch and do that again, making it an increase because we have two. So let's do it for the last two stitches since we're doing an increase in each stitch. One and two. And over time, you just become better at this. So don't expect yourself to be a pro at first. I'm not even a pro. You will see me mess up multiple times throughout this video. Your stitch count should be eight. We're gonna double count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Now we're gonna move on to row four. Into row four. For row four, we're going to single crochet just once in each stitch. So 
We should still have eight stitches by the end of this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remove your stitch marker. Single crochet in that last stitch. And that's going to give you eight single crochets. So now what we're going to do here is turn our work inside out. And now you, we want to, and now we want to finish the project like this because this is the side where the stitches look nicer. And when you're reading a pattern, this also might be referred to as the right side. For row five, it gets a little tricky. So first we're going to single crochet two. So one, and then two. Now we're going to increase in the next stitch. So one, two in the same stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch. We're now going to increase in the next stitch again. And then one single crochet in the stitch after that. And then after we are just going to do two single crochet. So one, Remove your stitch marker, and two. For row five, we're going to single crochet three. So that's one, two, three. Now we're going to increase one single crochet, increase one single crochet. Increase, that's two in one stitch, one single crochet, increase, and, oh, not me dropping the stitch, that's the increase, and then one single crochet. And now we should have three stitches left, one, two, three, and we're gonna single crochet one in each of those. One, two, Remove your stitch marker, and that's gonna be three. For row seven, we are going to single crochet once in each stitch. So this is the row seven. So this is the end of row seven progress update. You should start to see a little cone forming here. Your pattern should start to be looking somewhat like this. If you're using a thinner yarn, it's probably going to be a lot smaller, but it should start to have some type of curve. If you're not having a curve, I would try to run the video and double check to make sure you did everything correctly. We're going to move on to row eight. For row eight, we're going to see our crochet three. Increase your crochet two times two and then single crochet three. So let's start with the first single crochet three. One, two, three. We're going to increase the single crochet two and repeat that twice. So increase in this stitch. Single crochet two. One, two. Oh, not, not me missing the stitch. Two. Increase. And then two single crochets. One. Two. And then just single crochet three. One. Two. Take that stitch marker out. And then three. And you should have a stitch count of 14. 
not 4D, 14. <laughs> I always get confused. I can never tell the difference. So I'm just clarifying for myself, to be honest. For row nine, we're going to single crochet four, increase, single crochet two, repeat that twice, and then single crochet four. So one, two, three, and four. Now we're going to increase the single and then we're going to increase then single crochet two twice so that's going to be the first increase and then the first single crochet two one two and then we're going to do the second increase and then the second single crochet two one two and then we're just going to have four stitches free one two three four and you're gonna single crochet in those four one two three oh, oh, oh. <laughs> two three and I'm trying to crochet while holding the stitch marker ooh four oh I still dropped it it's okay we tried it's okay it's okay I'm not crying you are okay row 10 we are switching things up everybody we are switching things up for row 10 you're going to single crochet three then increase and repeat that four times so one two three then we have an increase here and we're gonna do that three more times so one Two. Oh, I ran out of yarn. One, two. We're gonna. So one, two, three, and then an increase, which is twice in one stitch. Now we're gonna do that two more times. So one two, three, increase, one, two, three, and an increase, in, crease, period, okay, congratulations everybody, where's my stitch marker, I lost my, I keep losing my stitch marker, Congratulations everybody, you finished row 11. This is a little progress update. It should be looking somewhat like this. As you can see, it's starting to get that pepper form while also going outwards so it can get bigger and that's what we want, so that is good. Okay, so it is now time to start row 11. So for row 11, we're going to single crochet four, do a repeat of increase single crochet two four times and then single crochet another four but don't worry as always i'm going to go along with it with you so row 11 so we're going to first we're just going to single crochet four so one two three and four now we're going to increase then single crochet two four times this is my first increase. And then my first single crochet two. One, two. Now I have my second increase. And then my second single crochet two. And you're basically gonna do this two more times. So increase, one, then two and then an increase one oh okay one <laughs> and two so now you should have four stitches left one two three four and you're going to single crochet one in each of those one two three And four. Wait, and four. So 
So for rows 12 through 13, you're going to single crochet once in each stitch. And after row 12 and 13, your pepper should start to look somewhat like this. For row 14, we're going to single crochet 8, increase, single crochet 3 two times, and then another single crochet 8. So first, let's just start with the 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven and eight we are now going to increase and then single crochet three twice so this is our first increase and our first single crochet one two three now our second increase and then our second single crochet three one two Three. Okay, not three. You should have eight stitches left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now you're going to single crochet once in each of those. If you do not have eight stitches and you have more or less, you might have skipped a stitch or added an exit in or added an extra increase in somewhere. I highly suggest you go back and fix it, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. Add your stitch marker and that's the end of your row being 26 stitches doesn't this kind of look like an elephant trunk kind of I'm totally getting elephant trunk vibe anyways we're now gonna move on to row 15 which has a new stitch so do not freak out party ah, okay. so, don't, so don't freak out because we're gonna walk through it and it's gonna be okay because every little thing it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right so okay where was I yes yeah, so row 15 it's excited so we're gonna start off by single crocheting two Bloop. Bloop. why am I making that sound effect and then we're going to do an invisible decrease so what is an invisible decrease so you know how an increase gives us an extra stitch well the decrease is gonna take away a stitch <gasps> I know it's scary so to do an invisible decrease, you're going to go in the front loop of the stitch. So your hook should be coming up like this. Good. Now you're going to go in the front loop of the next stitch. Do you see how there's one loop in the back, one in the front? This is the front one, and the one in the back is the back one. 
So you're gonna turn your hook and just go in the, oh, not me missing it. Turn your hook and go in the front loop of the next one. So now you're going to seal crush. So now you're gonna yarn under, pull through the both of those, having two loops on your hook. Then you're going to single crochet, sorry. Then you're going to yarn over and then pull through both of those. And that's how you do the invisible decrease. Now if you look up some tutorials or some online explanations, you will find about three common ways to do the invisible decrease. This is the way I suggest just because it's a lot easier when you're doing amigurumi because it doesn't leave the big hole but it still leaves you a big enough of a stitch to work in so you're not having to struggle and maneuver your hook in there wasting minutes and minutes and hours of your life. So that's how I do my invisible decrease but I definitely suggest you take a look around and see which one you favorite the most. So now that so now that we've done our invisible decrease, we're going to single crochet 18. So now you should have four stitches left, one, two, three, four. So we're going to do one invisible decrease, which takes up two stitches and then two single crochets. So for the invisible decrease, enter your hook in that front loop. If you hear that noise in the background, that's my dog. Say, hey, Noah. She won't respond because she's a dog and she can't talk, but yeah. So yarn under, pull through the two loops, and then yarn over and put the two loops on your hook. And then just single crochet too. That's one. Remove that stitch marker that keeps annoying me. And then two. You know what? I think stitch markers are so underappreciated. We're gonna enter our stitch marker into here. And that is the row. And that is the end of row 15. Okay, so for rows 16 through 19, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. And that's the end of row 19. I did the four rows off camera just because my camera is dying. I'm trying to finish this before it dies and I have to wait like five hours for the charge. So for row 20, we're going to do four single crochets, then a decrease. And we're going to repeat that four times. So one, two, three, four. And then an invisible decrease as you did it earlier. So enter your hook in the front loop only, and then the front loop only at the next stitch. Yarn under, pull through both. Ooh, ooh. Yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. So we're going to repeat that three more times. So one, two, three, four, and a decrease. And then we're going to hit two more times. And then one more time.
Okay, three, four, and then an invisible decrease. If I sound tired, I'm sorry. It's 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I'm not crying, you are. Okay, step stitch. I mean, stitch marker. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk. Okay, everybody, three rows left. Don't get too excited. Hang tight. Our, our peppers, oh, not falling. Our peppers coming together quite nicely, I'm pretty sure. I'm very excited. After this next row, we get to start stuffing and see the body. So for row 21, we're going to do single so crochet three, decrease four times. So the same thing as the row before, just with three single crochets instead of four single crochets. So let's do one, two, three, and then a decrease, invisible decrease. Remember, only going through the front loops, yarn under, oh, I messed up. Front loops, yarn over, go, yarn under, go through both. Yarn over through two loops on your hook. So crochet three, invisible decrease. And then we're just going to do, going to do two more of those. That's our last decrease at your stitch marker. And now it's time to stuff our pattern, yay! So here I have some polyfill from Fairfield. It's like a cloud, but polyfill is basically a polyester fiber fill, but you can also use cotton or anything similar to be honest. So if you were to add eyes, do that now. And then we're gonna add our stuffing. I'm not gonna add eyes just because um, I'm probably not going to keep this pepper, so yeah. I already have a pepper with eyes, so I only need one. So we're just gonna stuff it. I suggest adding a little bit of stuffing at first. I suggest adding a little bit of stuffing at first and then really trying to get it into the bottom because once you start adding more stuffing, it's really hard to get it into the bottom of the pepper. So really try to stuff the bottom of the pepper. Just use your fingers and push down and make sure it's sturdy like that. And then we can start adding more. Okay, so once you're done stuffing, it should look somewhat like this or like the red pepper here. So now we're going to start row 22, which is going to be seal crochet two, decrease four times. It's just like the rows before, just with two single crochets. While doing this, be careful to not catch the fiber fill in your hook. That's one, two. Invisible decrease. Remember, only going through the front loops. One, two. Invisible decrease. And then one more to finish it off. One, two, invisible decrease. And now it is time for the last row. Once I put the stitch marker in. Okay, now it's time to do the last row. So this is your last chance to add stuffing. So if there's any more stuffing you wanna add, you know, try to get this end stuffed up. Do that now, because once we put this last row, it's gonna be very, very, very hard for you to add stuffing into your project because the hole is gonna be so, 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 so small. Okay, so for this last row, you're going to do single crochet one, then a decrease, and repeat that four times. So the same thing as the row before, just with one single crochet. 
And as we're doing this, be careful to not catch the fiber fill in your hook. So let's pull into your crochet. And then an invisible decrease. One single crochet. And invisible decrease. And then do that two more times. So one single crochet. Invisible decrease. And then our last single crochet in our, oh, that's awkward. Our last two stitches for the whole pattern. And this is such an emotional moment. This is our last stitch for the pattern. <laughs> okay guys, are you ready? Our last stitch, our invisible decrease, ready? Our last yarn over, our last pull through. And we're done. Good job, everybody. Look at us doing the impossible crochet. Who would have thought? So you have our big little sh pepper. Look at our little, look at our baby pepper. It's so cute. If your hole can fit any more stuffing in there, go ahead and try and add more stuffing in there. See if that will help you. I'm gonna be using these little fancy Eiffel Tower scissors because I am extra like that. Links to everything in the description, of course. So you're just gonna get about 12 inches of yarn and just cut it. And then using your hook, you get to do the super satisfying part. So put your hook in that little loop and then just, this is awkward. And then just pull it. So satisfying. Okay. So remove your stitch marker. And now what we're going to do is use a sewing needle and sew in our ends. I can just find my sewing needle. Okay. So I'm gonna be using this little thick sewing needle. Whatever sewing you whatever sewing needle you use is okay, you just want to make sure it has one of these loops on it so it's easy to add your yarn inside you're gonna fold your yarn in half like this and then insert it through the loop on your hook and that's kind of like a little caleb little five minute life hack just so you know yeah so for closing amigurumi there's a little trick that you should use i'm not really sure what it's called but if you look up how to close amigurumis you'll probably find this so you're going this is our most recent row that we just did. So you're gonna go under one stitch and then into the next stitch. And this is only working in the front posts. So I'm gonna go under this stitch here and then over that stitch there. And this is basically to close your circle properly without there being like a bunch of little like holes in the most randomest spots and this kind of just close it all in one piece and then one more you should do that about four times I believe and then pull tight and your circle should just close it's kind of like a magic is that I think it's called the magic close I I really don't know and now you're just gonna sew in some random directions just to prevent your project from unraveling so some people make sometimes I'll make a little square sometimes I'll just go left to right it really just depends on what I'm feeling that day but sometimes I just really don't care so um yeah anyways so just try sewing it like this and that's going to help you so as you can see I went in about three different directions I would say three to five is a good amount once you finish that just snip this off and that extra piece is there just stuff that in the hole it's the fact that it's not going inside okay wait okay and there is your pepper base and you're going to do the same thing to this end with this tail here that's the tail that I told you to save to the end save for later remember that remember that remember that yeah so that one we're just going to close I'll just go once in like this and this is to make sure that there's no hole at this side since we can't do magic close so definitely go both directions to make sure there is no hole because 
I would really hate for your project to come for stuffing to start coming out of your project because that would be kind of crazy. So. And then just go in some random directions here as well. And then stuff that in. And there you go, a finished pepper body. Okay, so now we're going to be working on the leaf. For this top leaf part, I'm going to be using this teal-ish color. Also your inspirations. I'm using the Oko yarn, by the way. Also your inspirations. So yeah. And this is just so it shows better on the camera because the other yarn is too velvety and I just want you all to be able to get the... I just want you all to see the best stitch definition. So, we're going to do our chain to start. You guys should know how to do a slip knot already, as we learned earlier in the video. If not, rewind. Rewind! So, you're going to chain two. The single crochet five in that first chain. Oh, the lighting is really doing it for this yarn. Two, three, four. And then you're gonna add your your slip stitch. I mean your what do you call that stitch marker? Then you're going to single crochet once in each stitch for the next four rows. And remember, do not single crochet in that chain. Start on the first single crochet, not the chain. That is a common mistake a lot of new people make. Even advanced people still make that all the time if they're not paying attention, so two, three, four, take that stitch marker out, and then you go five. And just do that for about two more rows, and then I'll walk you on to your next step. Okay, so I have my four rows. Be sure to turn your work inside out before you continue. Please turn it inside out so we can have the right side. So now we kind of get to the confusing part. So we're going to repeat this step five times. So we're going to single crochet. We are going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. Starting from the second chain from the hook and then working down, we're going to do a single crochet, double crochet, then a half double crochet. So single, double, Oh, did, I, did we discuss double? I don't think we did. So for a double, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, yarn under, take your hook out, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, and then yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. And then for the last stitch, we're going to do a half double crochet, which is similar to double crochet, but half <laughs> of the work. <laughs> LOL. So yarn over, and so your hook into this stitch. Oh, not me struggling. Yarn under, pull your hook out, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of these loops at the same time. So yarn over and pull through all three. And then you're going to single crochet into the next stitch on here. So that would be this stitch right here. So I'm going to single crochet. And then we're going to repeat that about five times, five times total. So we just did one, so four more. So we're going to single crochet, chain four. One, two, three, four. Starting the second chain from hook, single crochet. Do a double crochet, which is a yarn over. Insert your hook into the chain, yarn under, pull your hook out, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. And then a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook into the chain, yarn under, pull your hook out, and yarn over, pull through all three loops at the same time. 
and then you're going to single crochet into the next stitch on the base. Good job. Let's do three more and finish. Fancy scissors. Cut your yarn and then pull through. So now this is what your pepper is going to look like. So you have two options here. You can see our crochet, sorry. You can sew this base onto here and sew each individual flap on down. You can sew the base onto here, leave the flaps up, or sew the base onto here and super glue the flaps down. I like to do the super glue version because I feel like that is just very sturdy. My flaps don't move at all and I use super glue from the dollar store so it's only going to cost you about a dollar and 25 cents and you can super glue all your flaps on. So that's what I suggest doing but you do you boo. So I'm going to sew the base, figure out what we want to do with the flaps and then I will meet you at the end. So for sewing your base on, you're literally just going to go in and out of the leaves like this. But when you go under, you're going into the pepper as well. Come out of the pepper and then out into the leaves. And then go out like that. And this is more of the ratchet way to do it. But I think it kind of does the job. And that's kind of what we want it to do. If your yarn keeps coming out of your hook, maybe cut a younger, longer piece next time, unless it doesn't bother you, then you're good. And just like that. As you can see, it's very sturdy right here, so it's not gonna come off. So just do that until the end. So just do that on the full circle, and then do whatever you like with the flaps. Congratulations, you finished your pepper! Ah! Good job, everyone. You all did so good, and I'm so proud. <laughs> I know that you all tried your hardest, and that's all I could ever ask for. So thank you so much for finishing. My camera's literally about to die. The red light is blinking. The red light is blinking. Make sure to like, subscribe the notification bell, comment, and please tag me in the creations that you make. I want to see your guys' peppers so bad. Okay, I can't wait to see all of your peppers. Until next time. Oh!